Let us discuss the daily challenge. Toggle exactly one bit. In this, we are given an integer, and we have to toggle exactly one bit so that the value is maximized. So the binary representation of twenty-two is one zero one one zero. So to get maximum, we have to toggle the most significant bit. So the most significant bit is here, over here. So this must become one one. One one zero. So this binary representation gives thirty. So the program must print thirty as the output. In this example, fifteen. All are ones. So there is no zeros to be toggled. So the value will be fifteen itself. So now let us discuss in detail how to implement it. First, we will accept n as the input. So n is twenty-two. So we will have an array to represent the value in binary representation. So let's say the array is like this. So initially we find the remainder when we are dividing by two. The remainder is zero, so it goes here. Then it becomes eleven. So again the remainder is one. So it goes here. Then again, when you are dividing by two, the remainder is one, so it goes here. And when you are dividing by two, the remainder is zero, so it goes here. Then you have one. When you are dividing by two, the remainder is one and the quotient is zero, so we stop. So the binary representation of twenty-two is one zero one one zero because we have to read it in the reverse direction. Because whatever we get first will be the least significant bit, so the most significant bit will be here. So we go in this direction one zero one one zero. So we have to read from the end of the array. So let's write down the index values zero one two three four. So now to change the bit, we have to go from the end because the most significant bit. So is this zero? No. Is this zero? Yes. So what is the index? It is three. So calculate two power three. So why three? Because zero is first occurring in the reverse direction at index three. Two power three is eight. So when you are toggling this zero to one, it means you are going to add eight to n. What is the value of n? It is twenty-two. So twenty-two plus eight, it is thirty. So we can print thirty as the output. So first represent it in binary array. Then from the end, you come and search for zero. Wherever zero has occurred, two power that index value because zero is at index three. So two power three is equal to eight. Add that to n. So let's look at one more example. Fifteen. So fifteen. When we are dividing by two, the balance is one. So let's write down the array one. That is remainder is one. So you get seven. You divide by two. Remainder is one. You get three. Remainder is one. You get one here. And when you are dividing by two, you get one. So four ones are going to be there. So what are the index values? Zero, one, two, three. So when you are searching from the end, there are no zeros at all. Which means there is no bit to be toggled, so you print n as such. So what is the value of n? Fifteen. So fifteen is printed as such. So now let us implement this in C programming language. So first we are going to accept n as the input. Because the value is going to be till two power thirty one, integer is enough. Now we have to represent it in a Array that is the binary representation must be in an array, so let's call it binary array. So what is the maximum size that is required? Thirty-two. So that index thirty-one will be there, and we can also have an index, right? So index is equal to minus one. Minus one indicates no values are stored. So and we can also create a backup because we will be modifying the value of n. So we will say num which acts as a backup. Backup means we will modify only num and the n value will be untouched. So now we say while num not equal to zero because remember 
we have to keep dividing and populate the remainders when divided by 2 in the binary array. So, bin array, we have to use pre increment operator because we have mentioned the index as minus 1. So, minus 1 beca must become 0 when we are storing the first value. So, we say num modulo 2 because we are dealing with binary. So, then we say num slash is equal to 2 because num is divided by 2. So, at the end of this while loop, the binary representation will be stored in bin array. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to go in the reverse direction. Now, index must go towards 0. So, what we are saying is while index is greater than or equal to 0, we are searching for 0 in the reverse direction. Okay, So, we say if bin array of index, if it is equal to 0, then what should you do? It is simple. You are going to add n with 2 power index. So, we are going to say printf percentage d n plus 2 power index. How to calculate 2 power index? There is a shortcut. You will use left shift of index. So, this will give 2 power index. Okay. So, these things you should know because bitwise helps us to calculate certain things very easily. So, after printing it, the program is over. So, we will say return 0. Then, you must also decrease the index values because if it is 0, it will print and return. But if the bit value is 1, then it should continue searching earlier, right? That is before. So, we say index minus minus. So, if none of the bits are 0, then we come here after the while loop because the return does not happen. So, this will happen for values like 7, 15, 31, where it is 2 power x minus 1. So, here what should you do? It's simple. We just print the value of n as such because there is no 0 bit to be toggled. So, our implementation is complete. Now, let's test the program. So, I am copy pasting the code from IDE and executing the program. So, the code has passed. Thanks for watching.